Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting. We are coming to you hot with the Chaos Theme Night Titan tutorial. I know I've been promising it for weeks. Feels like years to me. Um, this was a really fun project for me. My brother converted this model. He's my go-to guy on conversions. He makes all my first demon princes, everything, right? He blew it out of the water with, you know, the, the Lord of Skulls and the Lancer and one billion miles of green stuff. Gotta thank you. Big shout out, Green Stuff Industries. They're the guys who make the Tentacle Maker. Check out their website when you get an opportunity. We're actually doing a giveaway with them. We're going to announce the winners of the giveaway after this series is done, after I do these videos. But the way to enter into the drawing to win some of these products from their website is simple. You share this video. You share this video, YouTube notifies me. I put all those names into a hat and I literally will draw out the winners. That's simple. So just share the video, you, you know, you might get an opportunity to win some of these cool things, but check out Green Stuff Industries. You don't have to win something to buy something from them. Really cool guys, love their products. This was so fun to paint. Like I said, uh, the, the, the detail David put into it was amazing. I really had a blast. So please take a look at how this model came together and please just enjoy this journey with me, man. It was so fun. It's an, it was fun to build this tutorial for you guys. Thanks for checking it out. I'll see you guys next time, but watch this tutorial and please share the video. Let's do this thing. First color, black metal. As you can see, I primed this guy gray. Uh, I find gray being, you know, a pretty good neutral to jump into. Sometimes I go with black. Uh, I'll be honest, sometimes I just only have one color and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm just gonna make it work. So I'm gonna hit this black metal, which is a really good base color for metal. And I'm just gonna tear this thing up. As you can see, just laying it down very evenly, thick in some places, you know, just get inside the cracks. You're really trying to utilize this really dark metal to help you in the late game as you start dry brushing up and everything. Anything you might miss, let's say you just miss something like entirely, maybe it'll go unnoticed because it's so dark in the crevice, you know, like in the, in the recesses. Most things we do are gonna start with dark moving up to light and sometimes moving back to, to dark, like it's just, you gotta just let the process take you where it's gonna go. I know it sounds silly, but it's just the truth, man. It's it's my process. As you see, just you know, it's really it's a really dark metal. Uh, I got it. I got it all over everything. The fur, the hoses, everything. You know, like this is just this is a way to like, utilize your airbrush. Next, we're jumping on one of my all-time favorites, burnt umber. As you guys remember from the Blood Angels video, I show you this really simple way of doing red. It was kind of just to prepare you guys for how I was gonna do the red on this guy. So now I'm just going in with the burnt umber everywhere in my mind. I have envisioned red. The burnt umber is there. I'm gonna get this burnt umber all over the metal in some places. Sometimes I just you're just not gonna be able to help it. It's it's fine. We're gonna save time. You've seen me utilize this technique in other videos. Painted a lot of stuff metal. Now we're gonna paint the burnt umber. The burnt umber is gonna get back on the metal, and we're just gonna go back in and wipe the metal out with the paintbrush. Real big, fast strokes. Super, super easy. It's important to get the burn number on very evenly and with good coverage. Like this is definitely, don't don't, don't miss spots. Like this, is, gotta, this is the base color of the red. And you can see I got a very nice brown, that burn number. I mean, this is a classic color. I mean, I mean, I've been using burn number since I was a kid in like oil painting, you know, like it is a very good base color. Like to just, to, to, I mean, shades and everything. So now this is a red you didn't see me use before in the Blood Engine video. Scorn red, which is more like a deeper red. I wanted this, this is the blood for the blood guy, you know what I mean? I want there to be more depth to the red. Like maybe it's gonna it's gonna pop, but I want there to be a deeper red, like a you know, a corn red. Maybe Privateer Press was on or something when they called it scorn red. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to call GW on that one. But you see, I'm doing a really basic top-down Zithio highlight on this guy. Just super clean, just let it transition with the brown. As you can see, I mean, it pops out at you already. I mean, with very little work, it's already giving you sick transitions, very poppy. I'm very happy with this time, these combos. Like, I mean, I've been working red for a long time, I've been learning techniques, uh, different techniques even. But this is a, the simplest one I use. And here we're gonna jump into the Scarlet Red, which is a, really a blood red. Uh, has a little orange mixed into it already. Like, it just comes that way. But like, as I was saying to touch on what I was just saying, um, there's a lot of ways to do red. This is like the simplest way, but sometimes it just gives you the best, absolute best results. 
And we're just going to continue the Zenthio highlight. Uh, just coming from the top down, maybe I'm working a little bit in a 45 degree angle. I don't really overthink it. I just try to make it look good and clean. This will really help pop out the scorn red. As you can see, it's, I mean, it looks bright. It's, it's got bright, but it's got really nice transitions. You know, like that's not something that's easy to do with red if somebody to show you the process. You're like, it took me a long time to figure these things out. So there's not as much transitions as I like, but I'll come back and, and fix that. But you can see the red is definitely there. Like, I mean, it's in there. Now we're gonna go, we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of a different thing here, man. Like I'm gonna hit that Vallejo Air Orange. I don't use this all the time because it's kind of a hard color to work with. It's not my favorite, but it's very, very subtle. I'm just working a subtle transition here. So I, I do like it in this situation, but I have used this color a lot, a lot of times before. Haven't really been happy with it, but this is, I think, the place to use it. It's not really a color that you can just start with. You have to work to it. And I mean, you can see it's really subtle. You can barely see anything happening yet, but I'm really laying the, the groundwork for the Troll Slayer Orange, which is quickly becoming my favorite way to highlight red of all time. And now it's, now this is where you're really going against the grain. You know, like you're finding the spots, building that orange into them, you know, popping it out. Like this is where it's gotta be just, this is where you make that exciting transition. This is that, like when you saw the, the Warhound Titan video, you saw the absolute just ridiculous burnouts of the purples and stuff. This is kind of this, that version of, uh, of, you know, that technique, but on red. And now, and there, I mean, look at it. It's super subtle. It has a lot of transition, you know, it has just that real natural vibe that looks, you know, beyond normal. Like nothing in nature that's red looks like this. And that's kind of the effect I go for. Now we pull the burnt umber back out and we're gonna reestablish that transition. You can see the, the, the brown is like, you know, I'm going, I'm just going back in, under the, in the undercarriage. You can see, it's, it's kind of hard to see in the video, but I am reestablishing a natural transition between the brown and the scorn red, repairing any damage I did by getting a little crazy with my airbrush, you know, just because I want that dark to light transition. Sometimes I just end up wiping it out because I get a little over anxious a little overzealous with, my, with what I'm doing, but it, you can see it's that easy to fix. I mean, it's, I mean, we're barely, we barely, we're barely doing any work here. But so now what I'm doing is I'm taking a black I'm, and I'm pr just any black will do, but I like to use the Vallejo Air Black and I'm going in right at the edges, the very bottoms of where those, that bur umber is hitting that Baroque armor trim. And I'm just dropping a little black in there, just, just to give it that final definition. Now I take the burn number and I kind of just trace into the lines where I feel like I lost a little bit of the transition because just because it's the nature of the airbrush to wipe these things out. So I'm painting in my own transition. Just basically imagine what a wash does. That's what this is doing, but I'm not using a wash. I'm actually just using paints because I want there to be a common pigment between all my shades. So I'm just doing the manual labor on a model this big and just giving it the love that it requires and just hand painting those dark transitions in. Going into those vents, hitting them with a the dark too. I don't know what I'm going to do with the vents at this point. I just know that it's never a bad idea just to throw some of this burn umber in that spot too, you know, like those little cooling vents on his chest. You just, you just never know. So just, and, it, and you can see it's, it's coming out real clean. You know, like it has that crisp transition now. You know, you know, I mean, it's just, burnt number is just, a, it's one of those colors, you know, like, I, I know I've been talking about burnt number for like five minutes now, but it's, it's a good color. Now I'm coming back in with the highlight, using that Troll Slayer orange again. And I'm dropping a quick edge highlight on those plates, those like, are, I don't know what the, how you would describe them, but they are, you know, like an armadillo's armor plates as they, you know, like the layered plates. I'm going in there and hitting the top parts of those with the, with the that that final highlight we did of orange, but I'm just pure orange, hardcore edging that to give it that final razor edge pop. This is a very important thing to do to these types of models. You, you know, you can't can't cut this part out. This has to be done. Let me see if I can't show you what, what I'm talking about here. I'm gonna come in, drop off some highlights. And you can see, I mean, look how much better it looks. 
It's just the absolute thing that is required to tie in these types of models. And now here's that process I talked about. You gotta come back in and wipe out all the overspray. I mean, don't even overthink it. Grab your black metal, pour a bunch of it out and just go beast mode, just knock it out. Just don't even think about where the fur and the skin is gonna be. Just go in there and get it all done because you'll find yourself being slow by the paint by numbers process here. Just absolutely slap it down, slather it on and go. I mean, I just, I just love this color too. The Vallejo Airline just has such great coverage. I mean, look at how easy it is to cover with these metals. I mean, GW metals do not do this good of a job and neither do privateer um, uh, the P3 formulas. It's just such a clean metal. It's And it's uh, pearlized, so it doesn't have the metallic flakes in it. So it does have a different effect. You gotta be, you gotta know what effect you're getting into. This is, it's more of a glitter metal than a, than a metallic flake metal. And now I'm gonna grab some of that steel, just, you know, the brighter version of this metal. And I'm just gonna come in here and do a quick, quick dry brush. This is this is not to be overthought uh, at all. This is really simple. You have a dark metal, grab the next progression of light metals. You should have a few on your desk. And, you know, GW has a bunch, Privateer's a bunch. They, I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. Not, not, even, <laughs> not even something that I probably need to say. But I'm, do, I'm spending some time on that right now, right now, though. Dry brushing with the grain, against the grain, across the grain, whatever I can do to create that antique look. Dragging that brush across the range edge, raised edges. And you can see, man, it, it gives you that definition. You know, like now you can see the dark metal interacting with the light metals. This lets you kind of avoid the wash process. When you have a big model like this, oftentimes it's just a, it's just a hazard to wash it all. You know, so I'd rather go with just a really dark metal and just really nice dry brushing technique instead. So the next thing we're gonna do, take some of my classic molten bronze from uh, the P3 line, just come in and hit the Baroque armor trim. This is an obnoxious process. This is the most annoying part of uh, painting these large models. It's coming in there, very controlled. Paint by numbers. Get your water right, because you gotta get the consistency of this paint right. You gotta kinda keep going with it. And you don't wanna keep getting slowed down by having to pull more water out or pull more paint out. Get it, get it, get it all laid out ahead of time. Because this is the process that takes the most amount of time. Careful attention. Precise paint strokes. Don't get this on the red because you will hate yourself having to go undo the red. You can see, like, you know, I'm just sort of time lapsing the process here working all the trim in, being very careful, like I said, not to get any strokes or accidentally drag the paintbrush along the red armor. It is almost impossible to fix that kind of mistake when this is all a very nurtured airbrush effect and you have to go in with a paintbrush and try to fix a stray gold paint stroke on red. So I can't emphasize enough, be patient, be methodical with this process. You can see, I mean, it's immediately tightening this model up. I mean, look how different he looks already with just some, some trim painted. I mean, this is like, it gets you back in the game. You're like, oh, I'm getting annoyed. I'm painting all this trim. And then you see how he's coming out. You're like, wait a minute. I'm getting somewhere now. And you kind of like, sometimes it just revitalizes you to keep pushing forward uh, and, and, get, and, get, and get it done. You know, this is one of my favorite models I've painted all year so far. I mean, it's obviously, it's a different category model, you know, having this model converted so heavily, one of a kind opportunity to paint it, that kind of kept me in the game the whole time. So, I, I mean, hopefully you guys get an opportunity to convert something similar to this, or you can apply some of these techniques to your Chaos Marines, to your Mala Fiends, to even your Night Titans. I mean, there's a lot of similarities between this trim and a Night Titan. They're definitely on the same scale of size. You can absolutely apply these highlight techniques to any large model, any large walker model of GW base. And as you can see, the trim is almost done. We have we've got it all clean. And I guess now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this earth shade. I, I, I'm in love with this earth shade, and I'm going to paint, start painting the skulls. So he's got all these skulls and is built into his armor. And sometimes when you paint skulls, it's really easy to get caught up in skulls are white. You know, it's actually easier to paint white if you have uh, a neutral foundation first. And I like this earth shade for that. It's just, it's just called earth. 
uh, Vallejo Air. I painted all Earth. Th and that, that, I consider that my neutral base color. And then just come in with any white while it's still really wet and just start blending the white in to the earth. And you can see you're creating already an interesting looking um, a skeleton feature. Like it's got the really ruddy colors and the, and the crevices and, and the bright whites and the peaks. Exactly what you would expect to see from, from a skeleton. You can see there, I mean, as I bring this into focus, you can see in the fields of his arms, I did it to all the skulls in there. Really easy to see. Gives you that natural vibe. And you can see on his face. I mean, it's it just came out nice. Really easy techniques, man. All right. Now let's do the same thing to this ridiculous oversized uh, horns <laughs> that, my, that my brother made. I love them and I think they're awesome and they're very fa like fantasy. Like You don't see it very often. So same kind of thing. Just put that, put that earth on it. Get it, you know, get it going smooth and wet, and then start applying your white to it, blending it into the brown. This is just a hand, a hand, really easy wet blend technique. This is not very difficult at all. We're also going to tighten it up with the airbrush later, but this is just a foundation. It's just I find it easier to do to lay the foundation down with the uh, paintbrush, and then go back in with the airbrush on those types of things. So here's one of the colors right here. This is one of the secrets of all of my stuff. Reaper Orange Brown from their Master Series. I use this in a lot of places people don't think to use it. Fur. I'm painting the fur all over the, the servo ligaments on this guy. Straight up, thick, even coat of this Reaper Orange Brown. It looks kind of weird right now, but just bear with me. You'll see what, what, what happens. I mean, it already looks a little bit different. I mean, it's not quite there yet, but it's tightening the model. Bronze Flesh, another cool color from the uh, Vallejo Airline. I'm gonna come through and, and paint all these uh, patches of skin that are like, so it's supposed to be bursting through its skin, like it's now more demon machine than, than demon. Come in with an elf tone, the same kind of deal as before. We're gonna kind of quickly wet blend the elf tone into the Bronze Flesh. Running out of time here, guys. That's all I have for this week. I'm going to do a lot more on this guy next week with, uh, you know, some washes, some more highlights, some OSL. In the meantime, thanks for watching, players. Yo, dog! Thanks for checking out my channel. And don't forget, I've got plenty of other tutorials, tips and tactics, and many more. Also, if you get a chance, check out my best friend Robbie B's channel, Spikey Bits. He's got tons of sick videos dropping. Thanks for watching.